Yeah, going on to the last question, man. Um, what's next for you? What's next for me? What's next for you? What's next for Um, First of all, like, like, can I just like you know respond to your comment? Mm. I think entrepreneurs are um, amazing, <clears throat> and if you are looking for funding, again, I've never I don't bash funding. Mm. I you know I bash your the motives behind mm. certain people um, when it comes to funding, and I don't think you need funding immediately. That's what I'm saying. I mm. think you know when it gets to the point where you need funding, oh, yeah, then fine. go for it, mm. go for it, and do it with the best intentions. However, when it comes to funding, realize that um, investors are not, like you said, they're not investing just in the idea mm. for money. They're actually investing in you. Mm. And it, you, you, there was an important thing that you said is, oh, you believe in the idea. I believe in you. Therefore, I'm going to invest. Mm. That's it. Mm. That's, the, that's, the, that's the formula for getting funding. If you are ever looking for funding, that's the formula. Mm. You need to go with the mindset of, oh, I want to make sure that this potential investor trusts me. Mm. Not necessarily trust my business, but they trust me. They trust me that I'm going to give them a good return on mm. their investment. Mm. So your business could be the best person, best business ever. However, you could be an untrustworthy person. Mm. You could just be really boring. You could mm. be somebody like just uninvestable. You could be, you know, somebody who doesn't have the right background, who doesn't have the right, you know, experience or doesn't have the right vision, mm. right? And they won't invest in you. Mm. Even though you've got this amazing idea. Mm. And somebody else has got the exact same idea, probably pitches the pitches the it's pitches it a little bit different. Yeah. Uh, but they've got the vision, they've got the trustworthiness, they've got the skills. That person's gonna get the investment, mm. unfortunately. So you are actually the difference maker. I always say this: your business is not the the, the thing that you do different in your mm. business is not USP. You are yeah. the USP of your own business. Mm. When you develop yourself, you're developing your business mm. as a as, as a byproduct, you know. I, there are so many companies that do the exact same thing. What different? What differentiates them? Mm. It's the people, people in the business. The business. Simple. The people at the top, you know, make you know what happens in the business happen, right? Mm. So if you are somebody who doesn't know a lot about business, who doesn't, you know, who's not really interested, who doesn't develop their mindset, who's not a learner, then I promise you, your business will never go far. Mm. But if you are that person, you will find that your business will radiate from you. Your mm. business radiates from you, and and that kind of leads to the, your question of, oh, what's actually next to me? It's about you know developing Wizlaw by actually developing my you know myself mm. and the team, and you know trying to expand and trying to go. Um, trying to go to the next level mm. um, because it's at that time, right? You know, we're talking about this platform. It's time to make it a real platform. Mm. It's time to actually go to the next stage where entrepreneurs can come mm. and to that home where they can come home. Come mm. home so, as an entrepreneur. You're comfortable. I believe in a world. I don't know. I don't know whether it's just you or I, whether it's just me. But when I'm in entrepreneurship mode, I want to be surrounded by everything that's entrepreneurship. Mm. I want to watch, you know, shows that's entrepreneurship. I want to listen to podcasts that's entrepreneurship. You know, I want to get entertainment that's, uh, you know, uh, entrepreneurship. I want consultation that's entrepreneurship. I want to meet other people in entrepreneurship. I just want to be surrounded by that, you know? Mm. And I think there's that yearning again, you know, for, for uh, you know, business owners, small and growing business owners who want that kind of thing. Mm. So that's what's next, you know. It's about mm. developing, developing myself, developing the team, you know, you know, moving forward, getting funding. You know, we're at that stage now where we, you know, actually we're gonna, you know, gonna start to raise so that we can start to create that platform mm. um, for entrepreneurs. So, but it's about developing that so that we can really create that home of entrepreneurs. That's mm. what's next. No, definitely, man. I really love the mic. Where okay, well, I get to I'll ask you a question. Yeah, where Zan mm. will be asking me a question. He has prepared me a question mm. to ask for today. And Zan, mm. can you, could you let us know what it is? Yes, yes, yes. My question for you, Jeffrey, and uh, Student Guide is, um, so as a podcaster, it's actually, you know, um, interviewed a multitude of entrepreneurs. Mm. Um, what is the one thing that you feel like they are missing or like they need on the path um, to their success and the reason I ask is is you know because like I said I'm creating a home of entrepreneurs right and you've spoken to a lot of entrepreneurs mm. so I want to know from what you think is what do you think they need so that I could potentially incorporate it oh, that's a good question man um, I think whew, I always like to do things in threes so I'm nice. going to try and do this in threes um, sure, I, like I think the most important one is something that I don't think I actually understood until maybe like a week or two ago okay um, and that is that you are an entrepreneur. Mm. Um, I think sometimes we get in the mindset of you have to be like an established business. Like you have to have registered the company's house. You have to be bringing in like a monthly salary. You have to um, 
like like you said, like have angel investors. You have yeah. to have like a, a team. team of advisors. Yeah. Even like you said, you have to have a team board and all of this, board of directors. Oh. And it's just like, no, if you've got an idea and it, it like you don't even need to necessarily from the get go be like, okay, but we've registered as like a company yeah. and do, like no, if you have an idea I and mean, it's not, and I think that's the thing. There's the move from like this being a hobby or passion, yeah. and this being like a business like this is something I want to turn to a business yeah and I think someone I had a meeting like it was a meeting like a, a meeting with like again with some investors and mm-hmm. it was um like it was that but I, the person threw an accelerator that the only know how what I did and I'll yeah. again speak about them a bit later on but one of the things the person was saying to me is he was just like hey look you need to understand that you're not coming to this meeting as Jeffrey Oyun Lola mm podcaster guy yeah. like you are coming as Jeffrey and Lola, um founder of Pick Up The Mic yeah. CEO of Pick Up The Mic yeah. and it's just that it's like not like think of yourself as an entrepreneur so that would be my key thing is wow. that like even if you have a business idea you're not registered whatever like don't feel like entrepre- you're not included yeah. in the word entrepreneur yeah. it's something that you that's, can call yourself and I feel like that's, that's one of the things that definitely like um, okay. so people sometimes feel like they're missing empower, empowering people. So you know, you were saying I need to um, you need to empower those people who are just starting business. And you may not feel like mm. a business to actually say that you are a business mm. because you, if you are if you if you start a business, that means you're solving a problem. Therefore, mm. you're contributing to society mm. in a positive way, mm. right? So you are you mm. are you may not be as big, but you are on the journey. You're on that path. So it doesn't mean that you can't you know say I'm an entrepreneur because I don't have. A million or I don't have investors mm. that's that's really key so mm. okay empowering those entrepreneurs yeah, okay definitely cool, cool, cool. um I'd say the second thing is um I guess kind of like what you said like you don't have to get everything right mm. to get started um actually no I might even end up with four but um okay. cool, cool, yeah cool. It's, it's you don't need to get everything right to get started um I think sometimes people are quite hesitant to I think especially mm. because people think with businesses you need to like Bring in, I'm not saying like spend thousands on your business like from the get-go. I yeah. understand. I think it's it's that strategic planning and like thinking about how do you spend money. Mm. So like for example, for the I don't even think until like like it was well into like so again, like we're coming up to our second birthday. Mm. And by the time this is out, we would have done it. Wow. And there'll be Happy some birthday, stuff. Man. Oh, thank you. Mm. Um but yeah, um we really pick up the mic. Like I didn't buy a domain name mm. until I was sure, like, yeah, I want to dedicate yeah. like I want to yeah. pick up it's not a passion anymore I want yeah. to turn it to a business yeah. um because that was the thing I was like like you know I had a, a team of three um it was me and yeah a team of three actually um and then we were just like cool um you know let's see how it goes mm-hmm. we'll do our first season mm-hmm. if people like it we'll continue if people don't want it we'll, like, we'll stop mm-hmm. if people liked it so we said cool we'll go into our second season mm-hmm. then we did our third season then we introduced new things and we added people to our team and then we did like new additional content segments and we developed and it's just like that so it wasn't until like well into it, i was like you know what yeah i'm gonna buy a domain name because mm-hmm. i'm like i'm confident i, I want to do it as a business mm-hmm. And I think sometimes it's that. It's like people feel like, okay, I can't buy a domain name until I bring in like money to cover a domain name. Or I can't buy... Um, like Again, I'm not saying you need to register a company's house immediately. Mm-hmm. But again, yeah. if you want to be a business, you then you might need to start thinking about that. To, yeah. um, and I think it's also about... And sort of linking to that, it's also about like budgeting. So my thing would be, if you are perfectly cool to like spend... And I, again, I'm not saying like everyone spends like... 300 pounds on clothing or like three not even three thousand probably exaggeration but like if you're prepared to like put down loads of money for like stuff that isn't like again i'm not even saying like clothing isn't important but i guess what i'm trying to say is like if you're spending stuff on like social things so like mm-hmm. especially if you go on if you go out and you get like an, and i know sometimes i do this because again like when stuff finishes on campus late and i get an uber and i see the 40 pound cost oh it hits goodness. me hard 40 pounds yeah man it's hard. It's worse when you have to when you have to take it both ways. Like you have to take an Uber from the house and back. It hits worse because that's eighty pounds down the drain. But I don't know how you got in that situation. No man, because sometimes like someone needs to reimburse you. Or something. <laughs> no, sometimes, crazy. sometimes things will just end late on camp. Anyway, yeah, 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 I but, um, but I think my thing is is that is like if you're prepared to spend like let's say like eighty pounds on yeah. like a weekly night out, you're yeah. spending like eighty pounds a month on like going out, buying drinks, you're going to clubs, doing all this. Then think about if I'm not saying like don't do that, 
But it's about like budgeting. Yeah. So like, I think one of the things that my sister was saying to me is like, if I go out to like, I go out and meet with friends. Mm. Do we always need? Do I always need to buy like a starter, <laughs> a main, and dessert, and like two drinks? Thanks. No, I could be like, you know what? Actually, don't really need a starter. I'm just gonna have a starter, two drinks, or wow. I'm just gonna have like a, a, um, I'm just gonna have like a main and dessert. I don't need any, or I'll just get tap water. Yeah. And it's not, like, I know sometimes people feel like, oh, that person's being cheap or whatever. Or even if they say like, oh yeah, let's go to like, I don't know, like a cheap restaurant or yeah. like pub or whatever. People feel like, oh, I'm coming across a cheap. No, no. you are budgeting. <laughs> yeah. Because I feel like that's the thing that people forget is that like, I think my sister said it like, my sister said it best. She was like, when people, especially young people, that's, and I like, we mentioned it um, in an episode that's coming out about like, societies and like sports societies mm. um and we were talking about there like again it just started off as a conversation about like mm. what the society was about and then we mm. sort of dived into like other stuff about uni mm. but i think that's one of the things especially as a home student you see that student finance money come into your account you're like i'm sorted like whoa a thousand mm. something in my account i'm mm. i'm living like i'm a king like yeah. i'm buying myself like the latest tech, the yeah. latest clothes. Yeah. And it's just like, and then you'll reach like halfway through the month and you'll be like, you know what, actually. Yeah, I probably should um, have saved that. Yeah, I was just like, oof. Uh, you know, now I'm thinking like, what am I eating? Like, and it's just like, and I think <sighs> that's the thing. <laughs> but yeah, I think, I think, you know, the best way to look at it is mm. don't look at it as budgeting. Don't look at it as saving. Look at it as investing in yourself mm. and investing in your future, mm. right? If you look at it, like, think about people who, who actually invest, right? You know, what they've done is they've collated a, a, a sum of money and put it somewhere, right? Mm. And just they've they've moved money from X to Y. Mm. You essentially should think about your business like that. Is mm. okay instead of spending it like on that night out and spending buying you know tequila or whatever mm. it is these guys drink. You know, I'm gonna move that fund and put it into investing in my business. And it doesn't. Mm. And I don't necessarily just mean just put it in a bank somewhere. What you can do is you can buy courses, mm. right? You can learn, you can go to conferences, you can go to networking events, you can buy books to read. But you you can't just, you know, like you said, just kind of waste that money away. It doesn't really make sense mm. when you, it's better better when you invest it in yourself, mm. right? And 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 that's definitely important. I think that's a that's a good way to put it, you know, that investing in yourself piece. Before you start anything, entrepreneurs, mm. please, like I said, you are the USP for your business. Mm. That means you can start a business anyone else is starting, but you are the difference maker. Mm. Therefore, you need to invest in yourself. So before you start any business, that's the one thing I would say. Go and learn as much mm. as possible. And you will, and realize that you'll never be done with learning. Mm. Learning is an ongoing, ongoing thing. thing. People get to a point, like for example, it could be easy. I, th I saw a post on your Instagram page the other day, it's 30,000 views on YouTube, right? Yeah. That's amazing. For someone in two years, wow, that's pretty good. Yeah, right. I could list on my, you could list on your laurels and be like, okay, 30,000 views, we're on automatic now, you know, getting some cash in from the Patreon, let's just chill. No. Ah, I need to learn mm. how to go to the next stage. How do I get to? How do I? How do I scale up to mm. one hundred thousand views? How do I get from you know, you know, um, paying just a few Patreon subscribers to hundreds of Patreon mm. subscribers? Right? You you are never ever done learning, and if no, you ever true. think you are, then that's where your entrepreneurial journey stops, and you might as well just stop your business, in my opinion. And there's a saying in entrepreneurship that if you're not growing, you're stagnating, and mm. if you're stagnating, you're dying mm. in business. Like. Again, I said I said it before, it's that constant improvement of society. That's mm. entrepreneurship. So if your business is not itself constantly improving, mm. then you are stagnating. You are staying in the same place. Mm. And that means everybody else is going. going. If you're staying in the same place, everybody else is going. Mm. Effectively, you are dying, mm. right? So invest in yourself, invest in your learning. You are the difference maker for your business. Mm. What's your goal? So I really like that point. Oh, thank you, um, I think, yeah, the last one actually yeah. can count as two things. Okay. But... Um, it's like, so yeah, two, it's two things, but they're essentially under the same thing of like, make the most of what you get now. Um, now, for this, like, I'm, I'm specifically talking about, because um, again, I don't know how it works at other universities, and as you can probably guess, they're at the end of the month, and I'll do that whole segment once I finish this. But to me, my thing is, there are a lot, so actually, yeah, there's, there's two things with this. Um... Yeah, there's two things with this. One of them I've mentioned before. There's, actually, there's three. First thing that I've mentioned before, there was this guy called... I went to um, this event. Uh, the, yeah. the Imperials sort of like... I think they're called the Imperials Enterprise Lab. They were mm -hmm. doing about like, entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. One of the speakers they had there was an Imperial student. Mm -hmm. um, and he designed this prosthetic. Um, he got funding for it. Um, wow. He started a business. His, his key advice was he was saying like... 
as so he's a design student. He was saying the amount of students that come up with like creative projects for coursework mm. and then <laughs> don't they, it's just like cool, I've come up with this like even if it's not a million dollar, I've come up with this idea. Yeah. You know, nothing in the market exists like it. Or if it does, it's not good enough. Yeah. And they're just like, cool. Sick. I've submitted the coursework. Done. Um, he was just like, no, like just generally think about it. And that leads to the second thing, which is using the resources available to you while you're at uni. Yes. So for example, if you're a Brunel student, the Entrepreneur Hub is free to use. You get consultations with people who are sort of business consultants already who consult with other businesses. You get access to the workshops that like usually you'd have to pay for for free. Wow. Um, and they do stuff like business model canvases, pitching, video pitching. How do you get your idea across? Freelancers. What is a freelancer? Like what are the different ways you can freelance? What are the, how can you like save expenditures? The venture crew, like they do a wide range of events. Um, but like for myself as a student, First year, didn't know about them. Second year, I think I attended, like I did like one private consultation um, and like the person, like I had a, like it's something that I haven't stopped. Like it's yeah. something I still do. But um, for that, a person was like asking me all these questions, all this and all that. And I was like, you know what? Okay, cool. I'm not gonna like work with them again. I was like, it's, it's like, I'm gonna have to like develop myself and like come up with like all the, and I was like, cool. So I'm gonna pause. Um, and then yeah, it wasn't until like my masters that like I started like as a, with my course anyways, we had to do coursework was, which was linked mm -hmm. with them. So mm -hmm. I started using them again. Um, but yeah, I would say like, if you're a Brunel student, you've got a business idea, like get in touch with them. They, I think students have this conception of they're going to steal my idea. They can't, <laughs> they don't do that. They even said that they're not there to like, they're literally just to advise you. Um, students feel like, oh, I don't want feedback. Um, you know, feedback is the, th the only way as a business you will improve. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, that leads to my, my third point with this thing, which is like, again, like we already mentioned it, like trying things. Like yeah. there are people on, like like you said, you've been on the podcast. So the person I mentioned before, Deborah, she would, she she won a competition about, like at Imperial, about getting funding, okay? Mm. She ended up getting, I think she won, oh, I think it was like 30,000. Wow, she got, um, that's amazing. Yeah, th like 30,000 for a business idea to start, it's either, like she won a lot of money for it. Yeah. And I guess my whole point is like a lot of people, like even myself, like when I heard of the venture competition that Brunel does every year, you, it's like a pot of 10,000 pounds given, yeah. given to entrepreneurs. Um, when I heard it, I was like, oh gosh, you know what? Like I'm so like, I, other people are going to be like established. They're going to have like all of this stuff. Duh, duh, duh. And I was like, I'm not going to apply because I don't want to embarrass myself. It's so, and it's just like, no. Yes, and I like like I said, I applied last year. That was the first time I'm applying. I applied with two ideas. Uh, one of them didn't get past the first stage. The mm. other did. Mm. Then the other didn't get past the second stage. And you know, when it didn't get past the second stage, obviously I was a bit like, ah, oh, you know what, mm. kind of sucks. Mm -hmm. um, Could have used that funding for some. Mm -hmm. um, but I was like, you know what, now nah, let me keep on looking. Mm -hmm. And th about making the most out of the resources, like there are so many competitions like not even like you know oh like the so like the big one that especially for london universities promote is the mayor's entrepreneur competition because again as long as you're a london resident you're i think it's between like 18 and 30 you've graduated within the last like two to three years mm -hmm. uh no you've graduated you're a current student or within three years of graduating mm -hmm. um like you can apply mm -hmm. you get like i think it's like i think again it's, it's a large sum of money you can win but so people feel like oh gosh like you know i'm against like so many people no, like just apply. Um, just apply. There are so many, like last year, I, I use this as my example. I didn't get, like I said, didn't get the venture competition funding. I'm here thinking, you know, really great. I need to update my equipment for pick up the mic. What can I do? Looking for competitions. Mm. Then out of the blue, um, I get an email. Oh, there's a freelancer competition. I'm like, okay, freelancer competition. Let me check it out. And the Entrepreneur Hub do a freelancer competition yeah. and I apply. And I'm just like, you know what, let me just apply as a freelancer. I do videography and photography. Let me just say this is, you know, this is what I do. This is my passion. And let's see if I get funding. Um, I ended up getting funding through that. And I was just like, oh, cool, sick. I've got freelance funding. Yeah. And they were just like, oh, yeah, no, it's cool. Um, like, if you want to use it for, because they were so like, through the discussion I had with them, they were just like, oh, you know, you even do the podcast stuff you're doing. You can turn that into a freelance business. And I was like, oh, that's true. Mm. And they were just like, yeah. Use the funding for that. And I think that's like the big thing that people feel like 
they can't do, they can't apply for these competitions. They can't try these new opportunities. They can't mm. like get out of their comfort zone. Um, and I think it's like two things. One, you're, it's because sometimes people are afraid of failing. Um, or two, it's because you're afraid of like getting feedback. And yes. I think I think my thing is is one. this, is it's just like, even like through the accelerator program that um, the Entrepreneur Hub did and that I was on, like to me, I always tell any, any Brunel student, get in touch with them. It's a great opportunity. It's really good. Um, and the reason why it's really good is because you're speaking like there are things on pick up the mic that I'm we're currently doing never would have happened if I didn't speak. To them. Like it could have happened, but it probably wouldn't. Um, and it's just like speaking to them and hearing that feedback. I'm just like, why? Like, like I don't know. You, I look back on it, and even like I said, like the venture competition. Heck, if I knew about the venture competition, I would have been applying for my first year. I would have been applying every year. I would have chucked any. They even said it themselves. You can submit as many business ideas as wow. you like. It's available to you three years after graduating. So if you graduate this year, congrats. You can use this until I think twenty twenty six. Oh, yeah, it's just like, it's, I think those are the three things. Um, and mm -hmm. I feel like, especially as an entrepreneur, um, it's just, like I said, first off, getting comfortable with calling yourself that. Yep. Second of all, um, you know, not being afraid to like get feedback and stuff and like using these opportunities that are available to you. Mm -hmm. And lastly, it's all about like, just like getting out there, like mm -hmm. applying for stuff, trying stuff, doing stuff. Yeah. Like your business, no one's going to know about your business if you're just like waiting for people to come to you. Yeah. It's all, business is all about you like going out there. Like, yeah. you know, Amazon. Amazon started by, um, I've generally forgot what his name, Jeff Bezos. Jeff Bezos. Yeah, 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 it's a book company. Yeah, like, yeah, it, yeah. and the thing is, it wasn't even like he went, you know, like, oh, he was all across America. But no, he started in his local neighborhood just saying like, oh, do you want to, do you want to buy a book? Like selling books and doing exchange like that. And then he upscaled it. He upscaled. Yeah. And it's just like people and think that like you have to, like every big business comes from like, you know, it's like, oh yeah, I thought it was going to be. And it's just like, it's not. And the most important thing, and I think this is like the, 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 like to, to sum up this thing is that this is the, if you have to take something away, this is it. It's. You are on your own entrepreneur journey. And I suffer from this too. You know, sometimes I'll see friends being like, you know, successful, or I'll see like people doing similar things, being successful. And I'll be like, damn, hmm. I really, you know, I like, I really could have used funding or I really could have used this, really could have used that. And I think the most important thing you need to remember is you are on your own journey. Um, and you need to bear in mind that just because your best friend or whoever gets funding or like is successful does not mean that A, you have to be jealous or B, you have to be upset mm -hmm. because I, like I've said, I'm, yeah, because of time, I won't go into it, but there are many, and I think that's one of the things that my dad, and actually my whole family, to be honest, always remind me is that there are so many times in life. And I think that's why I even said that we should start doing it more often is because there are so many times in life where we have like, for myself, I've seen something, like something's happened and it was like a failure. Like, yeah. I didn't get into this or, you know, like I even said the whole, how Pick Up The Mic started, you know, not being the BAME officer at the student union. That, this is literally where it started from. Um, and at the time, yeah, I was upset. I really wanted to do it and I didn't get it. But I'm now just like, but look, I've done so much more, so much more than I could have done if I didn't get it. And it's just that, it's just like, just go out there, try it. Even if you do fail, like you yeah. never know what's gonna happen because of it. Um, yeah, man, it's it's just that. Like, yeah. I, if, to take anything away, just bear, you're on your own journey. Don't compare yourself. Yeah. Just like trust that if you are confident in your idea and you know that someone needs what you need, what you're doing, like, just trust, man. It's going to work yeah. out. Well, I mean, can I just add to that really yeah, quickly? Right, That's, uh, that was really good, by the way. That was, you just summed up entrepreneurship <laughs> <laughs> in general. And the thing is, especially about seeing your friends succeed and seeing your people, um, succeed and feel like, oh, why not me? Mm. If you benchmark yourself to your friend, you, you'll suddenly be surprised when your friends start failing mm. and because you bench your success to them, mm. you start failing too. So like he said, you're on your own journey. You mm. are on your own path. You are on your own steps. Take it day by day. Mm. Like Dory said, keep swimming. <laughs> just keep swimming. Take it day by day. Just keep moving. Just keep walking. Just keep crawling if you need to, mm. right? Entrepreneurship is a journey. And mm. I just wanted to speak on the maximizing your resources. That is literally entrepreneurship. Mm. That, that's business. Mm. Entrepreneurship and business is literally about turning a set of resources 
putting it together and creating something from mm. those resources, mm. like you need to learn to do that. Mm. If you cannot do that, then you haven't grasped the basics of mm. entrepreneurship, in my opinion. Mm. If you cannot turn X into X plus Y, mm. you can't. That That's literally, like if you look at any product, products are made from materials and materials are made from, you know, sort of things, sort of, yeah. Mm. Somebody said, okay, if I put these materials together, then I can make this product. Mm. That's literally maximize the resources and the value and the reason you pay an, an, uh, an extra pli- an extra pr- a price, um, more expensive price is because they've created new value from these, you know, separated resources. Mm. That's what you need to be able to do as entrepreneurship. So if you can't maximize the resources that's available to you mm. around you, whether it's through those competitions or through going out and asking something as simple as asking friends. Something as simple as looking up on YouTube. Something as simple as going on Whistler and signing mm. up for free, by the way, mm. and learning information. Mm. If you can't do that, then how can you expect to become, a, com- a, a first of all, a company that really benefits society? Mm. And then second of all, how can you expect to make good money off of it? Mm. That's literally mm. entrepreneurship. Maximizing your resources. Turning something small into turning something bigger, mm. right? Mm. And I have a story. Like I told you, on, on Whistler.com, we... we, um, we Tell everything through stories. Mm. And there's a story of Will I Am. I don't know if you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. everyone knows Will I Am. Will I Am, in my opinion, is honestly the greatest digital marketer ever. Like, mm-hmm. And that might be a surprise because, <laughs> like, this guy does songs. But honestly, if you go on Wizzle, you I'm not going to tell you the full story. Mm-hmm. Go on Wizzle, like, you see the whole story of Will I Am and how he turned that, um, the Black Eyed Peas into what it is today. Mm-hmm. No one knew what the Black Eyed Peas was, but you should have seen some of the stuff he did. He experimented with colors. Mm-hmm. Anyways, like I said, go look at, <laughs> go, go, go watch it on Wizzle.com, right? But he's the greatest digital, in one of the, in my opinion, one of the greatest digital marketers ever, right? And one of the reasons he he is is because he was able to maximize his resources. Mm-hmm. Here's a quick story. So Will I Am had this. Um, Will I Am was contacted by NASA. Right? Mm-hmm. If that doesn't tell you how much of a great mm-hmm. digital, that NASA did not go to a consulting company or a marketing firm. They went to Will I Am of mm-hmm. all the people. That should already tell you that this guy knows something about getting the word out there, right? So. NASA contacted him and were like, we need to, we have a space launch coming up and we want you to help us, you know, maximize and get get it out, get the word out there. And he had this thing where he, you know, he wanted to, um, he, he, he wanted to, like, he had a STEM initiative and he wanted to get the word out there for that. Mm. And he, and he also had another friend, the inventor of the, uh, what's that board? That the goes board. The, oh, ah, oh. I know, I know you. Everybody about. knows what you like. Yeah, forward, lean forward and it moves, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So the inventor of that also came to Will I Am again, not a consulting company mm. or, or digital marketing company. Went to Will I Am was like, "Hey, Will, I also have this um like initiative to do with STEM and you know to do with engineering and all of this kind of stuff. Can you help me with that, right?" And Will I Am was like, "Okay, yes, if you can help me with you know the thing that I, the um if you can help me with this other thing that he wanted." So now you got these three factors: Will I Am's um, initiative, um, this guy's initiative, the one who invented the board, um, and NASA. Mm. Right? Here's the greatness of Will I Am. Will I Am was like, okay, how do I actually maximize mm. everything? How do I put it all together to create something amazing? So he said to NASA, he was like, when 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 the when the rocket launches, what happens? It was like, oh, it, it emits a signal, mm. right? Because that's what you know, the rocket has to emit a signal back to Earth to say, okay, we've landed mm. or whatever. Okay, so he said, when it emits a signal. Can it, instead of in, uh, emitting a boring basic signal, why can't it emit a song? Mm. And that's what William does best. He writes songs, right? So he's, and that's all like, mm, interesting. Yes, we can do that. Okay. And they were like, oh, what song? What song? And he's like, oh, well, I'm Will I am. I can write the song. <laughs> right? Cool. So the rocket launched um, and it emitted a song. And here's the interesting, and here's how he maximized everything. He admitted it directly into the rooms of every, like, you know, of students around mm. the country, of, like, young students, right? And, the, you know, the rocket launch, the rocket launched, it landed, it emitted the signal, um, and all you could hear in, in the rooms of all of these children was that song that Rel.I. Am wrote. Mm. It's called Reach for the Stars, by the way, if you want to go, like, look at what the song is, right? And through that, this is what happened. NASA got the publicity, mm. like, all of those kids... It was on TV, like, you know, TV, it was on TV. The song was blasting out through TV. Those kids were watching it 
And then through that, he used it to talk about his STEM initiative. Mm. And he also helped the guy yeah, with the hoverboard no. with his initiative as well to teach people about engineering, to be like, mm. look at this rocket. You can also do it too if you get into this initiative. So that's three people he mm. helped. Plus, he also released a song which he mm. also yeah, made money yeah, from yeah. and put on his new album. Yeah. Do you see how just from one thing and from trading value with other people around him, he's now turned it into this massive, amazing mm. thing? Mm. And that's him maximizing his resources. Mm. That's what you need to be able to do as an entrepreneur. Mm. If you can't do it, obviously maybe not a Will I Am's level, but if you, <laughs> you need to start somewhere. You start in that small area that he, um, the you know, Jeffrey was talking about, and you go from there. Mm. You know, so you know Will I Am benef benefited four, well, three people and him twice. Mm. You know, so that's four different factors that you know got benefit from just this one rocket launch. Mm. Right, so you need to be able to do that, and it's it's so good that you said that. I love it. I love it. I'm I'm big on maximizing your your resources. Mm. If you can't, this, you know, uh, you you're gonna know what I'm talking about. But this is this is amazing. But but it says if I can trust you with the small things, mm. then it can trust you with the big things. If you can't be good with the, it's called the parable of the talents. By the way, mm. if you wanna go look it up, right. There's a there's a there's a there's a master. He goes away and he says, um, he says to his servants or to his people, he said, "I'm going to give you two talents, um, which is like money back in the talents. It's called money back in this. I'm going to give you two talents. I'm going to give you five talents. I'm going to give you um, no, sorry, I'm going to give you one talent. I'm going to give you two talents. And I'm going to give you five talents, right? And he said, and he goes away. Person with two talents invests it, and he comes back with another two talents. Great, which is like he's just doubled his money. Person with five talent also invests it." Comes back with another five and now he's got ten. Yeah. Person with one, <laughs> he hides it. He buries it. He he doesn't maximize his resources. And guess what? When the master came back, the master gave um the master, you know, you know, rewarded those who, you know, who turned their two talents or five talents into more. Mm. He gave them more, you know, he gave them better opportunity, he gave them just more rewards, right? Mm. The person who hid his own talent, his own money, um, who, who hid the money that he had, he took it away. He took it away from that guy and gave it to mm -hmm. the ones who <laughs> did well. Because he said, with the resources you had, you haven't been faithful with it. You haven't been able to maximize it. Therefore, you don't deserve it. And I'm going to give it to uh, somebody else. Mm -hmm. So if you can't if you can't maximize, like you know, Jeffrey was saying, the, the hundred pounds or the thousand pounds that you get from student finance, then what makes you think that you can maximize tens of thousands of mm -hmm. pounds of investment? Mm -hmm. You can't. It's mm -hmm. not possible. You mm -hmm. need to be faithful with the small things, and that's where you get the bigger things. And mm -hmm. this is where they're saying the rich get richer and the poor gets poorer comes from, mm -hmm. because the rich maximize. You know, and this is a general sense. I'm not, you know, there's obviously mm, other factors yeah, that come yeah. into play. But in a general sense, the rich know how to maximize their resources to get more. And the poor generally don't through lack of knowledge or whatever. They don't know how to maximize their resources. Therefore, they stay poorer and they get even poorer because the rich take from them. Right. Mm. So it's a thing of you need to learn. And I'm so glad you said that, Jeffrey. That's mm -hmm. entrepreneurship. At its, at its purest. Mm. At its purest. But yeah. yeah thank you, man. Um, by the way, sorry, let me just sum up the three things you said. So you said empowering entrepreneurs um, to, to let them know that they are entre actual entrepreneurs, even though, even though they don't feel like it. Mm. Um, second of all, investing in themselves, mm, yeah. you know, and allocating the right funds in the right places. And then third of all, was maximizing their resources mm. and also getting out there and trying new things. Yeah. Mm. Cool. I will, um, thank you for answering that question. I will. Mm, thank you. Yeah, try to incorporate. No, thank you. Um, but yeah, now we come to the MC of the Month section where we talk about amazing organizations and individuals related to our episode. Uh, and today, uh, as I mentioned before, uh, it's the Entrepreneur Hub. Uh, so for anyone who is a Brunel student, uh, Brunel's Entrepreneur Hub is a resource, as I mentioned, that is available to you as a current student throughout your degree and throughout the level of your degree. So what do I mean by that? If you're an undergraduate, you can use it. If you're a master's student, you can use it. If you're a doctor researcher, you can use it. Um, and also, as soon as you graduate, you can use it for three years afterwards. So any competition that they run, any sort of consultation you want to do, um, any of the workshops that they're running, you are allowed to attend for up to three years afterwards. Um, the reason why we sort of pick them is kind of like what I mentioned before. They do a wide range of events that can help you, whether you're a startup, whether you're a freelancer, whether you are interested, you know, whether you're sort of at the idea stage, whether you're sort of like 
you've got your minimum viable product and you're ready to sort of speak to investors. Um, they have a wide range of events and the sort of um, consultants that they use not only for the events, but also them, like within the Entrepreneur Hub itself do amazing work. So yeah, if you're not a Brunel student, definitely check them out. Um, and I guess necessarily, like I guess, yeah, they can count as MC of the month as well um, would be like, other universities. Now, like I said, I don't know every university and what sort of like entrepreneur thing they've got there and the rules about it. But like I said, uh, Br um, sorry, not Brunel, Imperial's Enterprise Lab. Uh, they have an amazing podcast series called Imperial BE, which is all about black entrepreneurs at Imperial and sort of talking about how there aren't a lot of black entrepreneurs at Imperial and sort of speaking to the ones that are there and sort of speaking to them about representation and things like that. So yeah, I would definitely recommend that if you are interested in like learning a bit more um, and sort of figuring out exactly, um, like figuring out sorry, what they do and things like that. Um, yeah, definitely get in touch with with your university's entrepreneur hub. But um, yeah, those are our MCs of the month. Um, and we'll include like the links to all their stuff. Um, it'll either be on, it'll be on the MC of the month page, but we might include some links to their YouTube channel in the description below. But yeah, before we end, um, Zion, I guess I just want to ask you, because yeah, as, uh, our, as these guys know, it's our takeaway section where we uh, will unfortunately not be delivering any delivery or Uber Eats <laughs> coming your way, uh, but instead we're delivering uh, the message uh, and the message of truth, which is essentially, what is what is your takeaway message? If someone, um, you know, let's say they just, just imagine they just walked into the room, yep. they weren't able to hear the whole podcast episode, yep. but there's one thing you want them to take away. What would be yep. the one thing that you would say from everything we've discussed today, you want them to sort of like reflect on? <clears throat> yeah. I think everything that we've discussed today can actually be summarizing, you know, the line of question and answer and can actually be summed up in um, the sentence, you are the difference maker. Um, <clears throat> it's not an investor. Mm. It's not your mum and dad who believe in you. Uh, it's not the you know the product or service itself. It mm. is you. You mm. are the entrepreneur. You are the learner. You are the one who who's creating something out of nothing, right? You are that person. Therefore, what you need to do is make sure that you invest in yourself first before thinking about investing in anything else. Before thinking about. Um, investing in a product or getting investment right for your products you need to actually look at yourself and look at where you are deficient and look to strengthen that area of your life right I've said it before i've said it again what makes a business different is not a unique selling point you are the unique selling point uh, when you want to go get investment they won't just be looking at the business they'll do they'll look at you when you go to a bank for an for, for, for a bank loan what do they do they don't, they don't ask they ask the reason why you want it but they look at you they say okay is this a trustworthy mm. person can this person they'll do a credit check they'll mm. do a background check right mm. they'll say is this a trustworthy person that can give me my money back and more mm. right so what does that tell you it's not about the reason it's not about the product it's not about the service it's about you it's about you and you need to do the work on yourself you need to do the work on your mentality you need to do the work on your mindset you need to do the work spiritually physically like mm -hmm. physically looking good as well is important i'm sorry for entrepreneurs it is important i think a lot of entrepreneurs can be like you know i can look nerdy like steve jobs listen steve jobs was a thousand times brilliant than <laughs> or than some some you know some entrepreneurs right you need to make up for that in other areas you need to look you can't afford in my opinion to let yourself go you can't afford to um, you know, in terms of, you know, your, your, your weight. And I'm not saying it's, you know, uh, I'm not trying to fat shame or anything like that, but I'm just saying you need to be, you need to be improving yourself, right? And, and that also, you know, means physically as well, right? It means mentally, it means spiritually, it means like intellectually, right? Read and learn. You, if you want to stand out from the crowd, you can't be watching the same Netflix series everybody <laughs> else is watching. I'm sorry, it's just not true. You can't be watching the same shows, listening to the same trifling nonsense that everybody else is listening. If by definition you are standing out from the crowd, then you need to do pretty much everything different, in my opinion. You need to watch different shows. You need to listen to different uh, podcasts. You need to read different books. You need to be that difference maker. And the way you do that is by investing in yourself. And I might have just, you know, offended some people, and I hope I did. And I hope what it does is not cause you to hate me, but it, what it does is cause you to introspectively look and then take some action, right? Take some action to, to because I'm telling the truth. I'm telling you the truth. You can start any business you like, 
if you are not the USP for your business, if you are not a difference maker, if you are not different, then your business will never go anywhere. So yeah, that's my key takeaway. You are, you need to be that person. You need to be the difference maker in your business. Yeah. No, thank you, man. Thank you for that. Um, but yeah, now it comes to the end of the episode. Uh, yeah, it's been a great, great talking to you, Sam. Um, yes, great I'm learning to you, more about the you know Wislaw entrepreneurship. Yeah, yes. essentially everything in between. Um, if there's anyone in our audience that wants to find out a bit more about Wislow, maybe want to get some touch on you, things like that, um, what's the best way for them to do that? Yes, so you can go uh, directly to our website, wislaw.com. Um, we managed to get a .com domain there, which is amazing. <laughs> so, uh, wislaw.com. Or you can find me personally on Instagram at Zion, on, Zion Z-I-O-N, underscore Khaled, K-O-L-A-D-E. Or you can go directly to Wislaw's Instagram page, which is uh, Wislaw Official. So those three channels, if you want to talk to me, I'm not one of these people who went like you, like, you know, I, I message you, um, I reply, we could talk, have a conversation, mm. we could see how we can trade value, like, and then let's go from there. So yeah, yeah. those are three main places. Definitely. Thank you. Uh, and yeah, thank you to you, our wonderful audience. You came back for another episode of The Student Guide. If you like this, uh, if you liked this episode, like, comment, subscribe is always appreciated. If you want to make sure you don't miss the next episode, make sure you click the notification at the bottom of the video. And finally, if you're interested in receiving some perks, if you're interested in supporting the podcast, as I mentioned before, we have a Patreon page. This Patreon page allows us to continue to do the work that we are currently doing, maybe even expand. So uh, please do check that out. The link will be in the description. But yes, we have come to the end of today's uh, today's episode of the Student Guide. Um, we'll see you next time when we open the Student, gu- student Guide and dive into a completely new topic. Uh, so that's bye from us here. Enjoy your day and speak to you soon. Stop.